for our next Worst First page, please welcome Jennifer Hutchison. And to help, which you'll understand in a minute, Josh Gondelman and Mark Evan Jackson. There was a question about the microphone, so yay. Uh, hi, I'm Jennifer Hutchison. Um, I am a screenwriter, primarily working in television, so when Paul said, hey, you want to write a worst first page, I said, can I write like a scene, please? Because um, that's really where my bumper level is. So instead of worst first page, we're doing a worst first scene. And it's a lovely gentleman who has stepped up to help. Uh, so here we go. Uh, the first scene of sci-fi masterpiece, uh, Infinity Vortex, segment four. <laughs> Exterior space, the void. Day, night, time doesn't exist here. We're wide on the inky blackness of space, darker than the deepest pits of the mines of Braxis III. Where is that? I don't know, man, I made it up. That's how this works. <laughs> Darker than that special black that one guy patented and won't let anyone use without paying for the note. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Darker than your seventh grade homeroom teacher's soul. <laughs> Maybe just mine. Uh, there aren't even stars out here. There should be stars though, right? Uh, no, hell yeah, there should be stars. But we'll get to that, and to the bastards who stole them. <laughs> Suddenly, a blinding flash of light rips through the black, tearing a gaping wound across the void with a shriek. Barely visible inside the blinding light is a silhouette of something, something hurtling towards us, hurtling fast. Closer and closer until we can make out what it is. It's a ship, a spaceship. <laughs> it's beach of shit. No shiny utopia jumpsuit bullshit here. This thing's been to the farthest reaches of the galaxy and back, the journey written all over its hull, in dents, scorch marks, and strange and likely pornographic alien graffiti. <laughs> as soon as it's out, the tear in space collapses with a whoosh. Our lonely ship, now a lone spot of tarnished silver in the vast, lonely, velvet blanket of empty space. Smash two. Interior, SS Argonautis Bank Wilkinson, command deck. Close on the scruffy, unshaven face of Breck Trevelyan. Think Tom Cruise, 28, 6 foot 5, and all muscle. A half sneer perpetually on his lips. His eyes scan the instrument panel before him as a single bead of sweat drips down his chiseled brow. Well, it appears we're still alive, little brother. Reveal. Hunched down in the seat next to Brett is his younger brother, Macton Trevelyan. Timothy Chalamet, 24, 6 foot 4, and lanky with a mischievous tilt to his chin. You sure? We did pass through a bright light. You know as well as I do what Dad always said, little bro. The last thing you feel before you die is the frigid crunch of Dad's eight finger grip tightening round your neck as his other hand gently strokes your back to comfort you as you drift from this mortal plane to the unknowable land to the yeah, unknowing. That's it. <laughs> of course I remember. You repeated it to us every night before bed, as you know. Uh, the brothers smile, but then the smiles are replaced by sadness. Macton wipes away a single tear. I can't believe it's been ten years, big brother. Ten years since Dad died and left us with this ship. We're taking real good care of Pops, I promise. That's why we're here, little brother. To make sure it doesn't get to eleven. Damn straight, big brother. I just wish Bob and Polly was still here. To be there when we enter the Infinity Vortex and bring Dad back. Back from the dead. You know as well as I do that our own sister knew when she went down into the abyss of Carpathics to retrieve the Nevalian navigation crystals, there was no coming back. Matthew shakes his head, suddenly angry. And you didn't stop her, big brother! You were supposed to protect her! Her and Mom! Don't you think I know that? <laughs> the sight of Polly's face swallowed up in those Thousands of hungry moths tortures me every single day, little brother. And don't you know how often I wish it was me and not Mom, who that 12-horned Galtorian ram gored right through the heart? Every goddamn minute of every goddamn day, little toe, brother. I know, I know, big bro. 
and I'm sorry. A long beat of silence. Longer. Even longer. Until. <laughs> Let's just focus on bringing back Dad. Before the vortex closes and the collector collector finishes snapping up every single star in the universe. Before they get to Earth and steal our son. Rex is back at the control panel, his fingers flying over the old school interface. Think alien, none of that futuristic Avatar shit. <laughs> it beats once, twice, three times as the green glow of a pulsing circular mass resolves at the center of the display. Yeah, baby. There she is. The Vortex? Seriously? Just where the Council of Three said it would be. We did it, big brother! The brothers embrace, looking upwards. <laughs> Almost there, Pops. Suddenly, the intro panel goes haywire as alarm sounds. Oh, I get a not-so-good feeling about this. <laughs> Brad, fingers flying over the control. No! No, it can't be! We miscalculated the threshold parameters of the last time tear. It's thrown us, of course. I knew it was too good to be true. How far off course? Brad looks down, not wanting to say it. How far off course? <laughs> I'm so sorry, little brother. How far off course, big brother? Where are we? Not where, little brother. <laughs> when. Some pages are longer than others. It was a scroll, so it counted. <laughs>